Nanti kalau ada rezeki boleh jumpa lah balik. Okay, so we start ah. Okay, so today, uh, first thing guys, you must realize that this chapter is related to form 4 chapter. Huh? Bab ni berkait dengan form 4 bab kamu. Form 4 bab mana? Bab 8. Okay, you also learn about measure of this person. Sukatan selakan. But guys, what is the difference? Apa perbezaan antara form 4 punya bab dan form 5 punya bab sekarang? What's the difference? Yes, yang ni data terkumpul. Group data. Yes, graph also. Graph, yang form 4 kamu tak lukis graph. Hanya... Uh, apa? Box plot Okay, lukis yang tu saja. But over here in form 5 Kamu kena tahu tiga jenis graph Histogram, uh, ojai, frequency, polygon Of course got lebih daripada yang tu lah uh, Boleh combine, you can combine a few graph But we'll see that later lah Okay So now, uh, maybe I start to talk about the topic a bit first lah We we'll brief a bit, kita go to sikit So of course, first thing you Kamu kena tahu lah beberapa term basic you must know a few basic term on this chapter. Okay. So first thing, uh, class interval. Okay. Dalam BM size class. Okay, guys. How do we count size class? Can anyone tell me? Apa rumus dia? How to count the size of class interval? Nak tahu size class tu. Macam mana? Uh, can you, anyone remember the formula? Yes. Continue. Not finished yet. Ada satu lagi perkara guys. Highest minus lowest. Very good. Divide by the number of class. Betul. Bagi dengan jumlah class yang kamu nak. Okay. Divide by number of class. Okay. Tapi soalan ni mereka takkan tanya lah usually. Soalan ni tak favorite sangat. Because yang ni tak diguna untuk plot apa-apa graph pun. You won't use this to plot any graph. Because jadual tu akan diberi pada kamu. It's already given. So kamu tak. Tak famous sangat lah untuk kira yang ni. Ada yang lagi famous. Okay, but just remember lah the formula sebab yang ni tak diberi. So, kena hafal. Okay, ataupun kamu faham lah. Understand the formula. Okay. Interval means the size. Okay, apa julat dia? What is the range from the highest to lowest value? Itu sebab kita ambil highest tolak lowest. Bahagi dengan bilangan class yang kita kena ada. The number of class. Okay, so I hope you all understand the formula lah to get the interval. Okay, so how about midpoint formula, guys? Titik tengah, macam mana nak kira? Anyone? Can you all tell the formula? For this chapter, ah, not coordinate geometry semua tu. Midpoint for this chapter. Anyone? Uh, yes, what? Apa yang plus? What quantity? Dy2 is correct. Apa yang atas? Uh, yes, highest, lowest. Ataupun hard atas, hard bawah. Lower, wait, uh, lower limit plus upper limit. Guys, apa itu hard atas, hard bawah? What is lower limit, upper limit? You should know lah from your class. Okay, contoh lah, example. Let's say I give you a class 58 to 63. Okay, this is your class. So guys, what's the lower limit? Apa hard bawah? Huh? Hard bawah, lower limit. Yes, this is lower limit. Okay, don't confuse with one more thing. Huh? Ada satu lagi perkara. So don't confuse. This is the lower limit. Lower limb. What is the upper limit, guys? Apa hard atas? Yes. Okay, this is the upper limit. Correct. Okay, so now, can I ask what is the class size? Apa size class yang ni? Tamo, lagi? Wait dah. Uh, I think should be 6, yeah. Should be 6 because you have to include 58 to 63. Okay, you count your finger lah. Kamu kira guna jejari, you should get 6. 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63. Okay, 6. Okay. So, uh, now, let's say, uh, can anyone tell me uh, apa sempadan atas? What is the upper boundary? This one? 
very good 63.5 ub or in bm is sa okay how about the lower boundary tempalan bawah very a eh? yeah 57.5 don't confuse that guys must minus ah lower boundary tempalan bawah kena tolak okay this one is lb or sb okay so basically semua perkara everything is over here already that you need to know lah Okay, a summary for all the value that you can have. Okay, I think, yeah. So now, let's say I involve some more data. Saya bagi lebih data pada kamu. Okay, separate question lah guys. Okay, so let's say lah. Something like this. Uh, 2.5 to 2.8. Okay guys, uh, can anyone tell me? For this one, ah, midpoint, apa nilai midpoint, titik tengah, what do you get midpoint? Very good, 2.25. Macam mana cari titik tengah guys? Hard bawah tambah hard atas bahagi dua. Lower limit plus upper limit divide 2. You get 2.25. Okay, how about the bottom one guys, yang ni? What is the uh, midpoint, titik tengah? Very good, 2.65 means you understand lah. Okay, so now, uh, what is the uh, lower, lim lower limit for this one? Apa hat bawah dia? Very good. Okay, 2.1. Okay, don't confuse lah guys. Hard bawah is 2.1. For this one, apa hard atas dia? What is the upper limit? This one, 2.4. Okay, good. So now guys, the interesting part. Can you all tell me what is the upper boundary? Apa sempadan atas untuk yang ni? Ah, ah, ah. Careful, careful. Okay, you all not careless lah. Very good. 2.45. Okay, yeah, 2.45. Guys, anyone rasa kat sini jawapan dia 2.9? Anyone thought of this answer for upper boundary untuk sempadan atas yang ni? Ada siapa fikir yang ni? 2.9? Anyone? Tak ada, ha? Means you all 2.85, ya? Macam mana dapat? Oh, yang ni ke kamu cakap, Afika? Yang bawah ni. Okay, the answer is this one, ah, guys. Oh, saya tanya yang atas, the upper one. Okay, yang pertama tu. Okay, so don't think 2.9 lah guys. Jangan ingat selalu hard atas kena tambah 0.5 untuk dapat sempalan atas. Don't always think your upper limit, you must plus 0.5 to get the answer. Wrong concept. Okay, there can be many possibility. Why? Sebab nombor ni adalah perpuluhan, decimal. Okay, decimal not necessary plus 0.5. 0.5 adalah untuk nombor bulat, whole number only. Because semua soalan SPM bincang pasal whole number, nombor bulat, kamu anggap everything must plus 0.5, but not like that. Okay, SPM untuk mudahkan kamu, they give you whole number, so that easy to plot. Okay, senang nak lukis graf semua tu. Okay, but this just a reminder lah, kalau keluar decimal, remember, you must take this one plus this one divide by 2. Maksudnya kamu dapat 2.45 lah. Sempadan atas. Semua faham? Everyone understand? Penting ah yang ni. Ya. Yeah. Don't always think plus 0.5. Okay. Sebab yang ni, it will be plus 0.05. Okay. Extra 0. Sebab decimal. Okay. So, this one reminder only lah. Okay. So, I think master already all the basic. So, now we talk about frequency and cumulative. Okay. So guys, uh, when do we plot frequency and when do we plot cumulative frequency? Kat mana kita plot frequency dan kat mana kita plot frequency cumulative? Anyone know? Which type of graph? Okay, ojive mana satu? Very good, cumulative for ojive. Okay, always remember guys, ojive must cumulative, longgokan. Okay, no other choice. How about just frequency? Hanya frequency graph jenis apa? Yes, histogram. Okay, histogram we only plot frequency. Lagi? Others? 
other type of graph line graph that plot frequency on y axis anyone know guys kamu lupa ke frequency polygon you all remember this frequency polygon this is also another graph ah guys kena ingat frequency polygon is another type of graph okay beside histogram okay basically saya boleh tunjuk shape lah i can draw a bit so basically histogram dia macam ni kan histogram you will draw something like this am i right okay histogram okay frequency polygon macam mana guys how is frequency polygon like this like this like this like this like this am i right guys yang ni kamu sambungkan titik guna garis lurus straight line you connect all the dots with straight line it is not a curve okay bukan lengkung kamu guna pembaris untuk sambungkan do you all see this before guys everyone here pernah nampak <laughs> ah betul for call christmas ah so this is frequency polygon okay they can ask you to draw this also so y axis is frequency okay untuk graf jenis ni kekerapan okay this one is histogram histogram is something like bar chart lah okay charta bar exactly the same almost histogram or bar chart okay so macam mana kamu akan lukis kalau mereka suruh combine dua-dua ni sometimes the question can ask you draw a histogram and frequency polygon Okay, mereka boleh combine dua-dua. So, kamu combine jugalah. Kamu kena tahu titik kamu yang kamu plot, the tip, the point you plot is the midpoint. Okay, for this class. Untuk class yang ni, the titik you put there is the midpoint. Titik tengah bagi class tu. So, kamu kena cari semua titik tengah lah. Find all the midpoint. And then, kamu lukis macam ni. Okay, guna pembaris lah. It's a straight line. Okay, there's one more here. Sorry. Okay, should go like this. Okay, guys, make sure uh, frequency polygon kamu kena sentuh x-axis. Okay, it must touch the x-axis. Okay, so one contoh lah, maybe common mistake. Let's say I do a frequency polygon like this. Like this, like this, like this, like this. Okay, guys, is this frequency polygon? Adakah ni polygon frequency? No, right? Okay, why? The name itself is frequency polygon. Nama dia adalah frequency polygon. So polygon is what, guys? Can I say is this a polygon? Right or wrong? Yeah, polygon must be close. Okay, tertutup. This is why kita kena sambungkan kat bawah. Then only you form a polygon. Okay, can you see when it's close? Okay, so you must connect to the x-axis. Okay, so basically, this one... And this one, dua titik ni, this won't be in the data. Mereka takkan bagi. You have to find it out. Kamu kena cari what is these values. Find out. Okay, nanti when you try question, you will know what I mean lah. Here is just example only. Okay? So, go one thing ah guys, I want to share with you here. If you see your textbook lah, this one. Do you think label ni betul? Frequency polygon? Is it correct? Kalau nampak graf yang ni, try to look at the camera guys, so that you all can see. Can you see it? Is this frequency polygon yang ni? Uh, yes, you're correct, partially correct. Yeah, it's both actually. Supposedly, the textbook should put histogram and frequency polygon. Okay, histogram tambah polygon frequency. Yang ni, if they just show frequency polygon macam mereka label, it should just be the line yang ni. This one is called frequency polygon. Tanpa baba. Without all the bar chart like that. Okay, that is called frequency polygon. Okay, guys. So, if combined, kamu kena lukis dua-dua lah. Bar dan juga the line. Alright. So, up till here. Everyone everyone clear? Can understand? Okay, ah. Huh? Okay. So, let me see anything else. Mm. Okay. Okay, now we talk about the distribution shape. Ah, uh, just now only I sent in the WhatsApp group. I just noticed this when going to If you all came lah that day, okay, for those who came my extra class, uh set 3 mathematics, 
you will know that the trial we state uh, maybe slang or if not mistaken they came up with two options guys semua kat sini pernah tak kamu dengar nama macam ni binomial or reverse j shape for distribution for those that never attend the class lah have you all heard of this before pernah dengar tak pernah before i send that message i mean sebelum saya hantar message tu have you all heard of this never yeah if you study your book text well okay yeah because the penggubal soalan is smart when they put at the corner of your textbook there a lot of people takkan tengok a lot of people won't look so mereka akan pilih soalan dari situ this is how they create question from the side of the textbook certain info that's why kamu kena baca okay although maths is not a studying subject walaupun maths tu bukan subjek untuk ambil buku teks dan belajar macam ni tapi kadang-kadang masalah untuk info-info penting macam ni because objective okay favorite objective okay this how that's why i so didn't know honestly guys i telling from my experience bila saya duduk di SPM 2022 i didn't know such a thing exist actually by model and reverse j shape honestly saya tak tahu ini wujud sebab saya tak tengok ini, nasib baik soalan tak keluar tanya yang ni. Okay, question didn't ask on this. But how if it how if they ask? Uh, gone lah. Okay, so please take note lah this one. Okay, you never know. Since in trial come out, maybe in SPM also might come out. Uh, since I say you all go study lah guys. Kalau saya kata kamu pergi belajar lah so that you don't panic when you see that question. Later you all get deja vu lah guys when see. Suddenly your SPM mathematic keluar this one you remember this class. Ah uh, don't get deja vu later. I already remind. Okay? Ah uh, the feeling very not nice. Okay? So now ah uh, let's say now we talk about distribution now uh, guys. So guys what is this type of distribution? Can anyone tell me? Apa jenis tabuan macam ni? Very good, bell shape or normal also can. Kalau kamu ambil and match, you will say normal lah. If you just take match, you will say bell shape lah. Okay, normal or bell shape. But in match lah, guys, don't say normal lah. When the question asks you what type of distribution, say bell shape. Okay, jangan kata normal because this is match. Match never learn normal distribution. Okay, tak belajar pun. So make sure you say this one. Okay, so uh, that's one famous one. And then, of course, you have this one. Uh, how to draw this? Namai lah, I draw with the bar. The shape is like something like this. Okay, like this, and like this, and maybe like this. Okay, guys, what kind of shape is this? Huh? Apa jenis tabuan macam ni? Ah, bentuk loceng in BM. Very good. Uniform distribution. Seragam. Uh, not discrete. Discrete is binomial, if not mistaken. Okay, tabuan binomial. Binomial is like this. For those take and match lah. It's something like this. Okay, you got the lines like this. Okay, this one is uniform. Because if you cuba to connect all the points, you will get something like a uniform shape. Okay, about there lah. Anggap. Uh, agak, agak. Not everything will be same like this. Okay, sometimes one might be slightly down like this. Ada satu akan sikit ke bawah. So don't care about it. As long as you see it's almost uniform, we call it uniform or seragam. Okay, so next one. Huh? The other two is very popular lah guys. Right skewed and left skewed. I think you all know right? Pencong ke kiri, pencong ke kanan. Kadang-kadang you all confused right guys? Macam mana nak tahu pencong ke kiri or pencong ke kanan? Am I right? You all sometimes confuse where is skewed to right or skewed to left. Okay, basically, where the data is most collected, the highest frequency of data. Okay, if you tough to understand, basically, you can draw it out. Lah. So, guys, let's say I got something like this. You try to draw out the curve, then you can understand. So, guys, is this skewed to left or skewed to right? Tengok mana paling banyak data tu terkumpul. Where is the most data collected? Kiwi, where got right? You see over here. You see the frequency. Tengok frequency, guys. You plus all the frequency. Definitely left side is more. 
Okay, kiri lebih banyak. So that's why skew to left. Okay, ataupun pencong ke kiri. So guys, uh, right dah, wait dah guys, let me see. Okay, no lah. Because more data on the left. You can see textbook also is left. Okay, whenever you see ada lebih banyak frequency kat belah kiri means it's skew to left lah. Okay, so guys, anyone know what's another name for this? Uh, later I'll show you, wait, wait. There's another name for skew to left. Anyone know? Ah? Satu lagi term. Kalau saya tak mau kata pencong ke kiri. Anyone know? There's another term. Very good. Negatively skewed. Pernah dengar tak yang ni guys? Pencong negative. Negatively skewed. Because left direction maksudnya negative. So skewed to left or negatively skewed. These two mean the same thing. Uh, I rasa pencong negative lah. And the direct translation. Skew is pencong negative negative. Ah, uh, Pencong negative. Okay. So dua-dua ni sama. Jangan tulis dua-dua. Atau. Okay. You want to write skew to left. Ataupun negatively skewed. Also can. Okay. So now. Let us talk about right skewed. How it look like. Pencong ke kanan. Uh, guys. This graph very useful in one scenario. You all know what ah. Graph ni sangat. Penting in one case. Anyone know? Just to make a joke. No? <laughs> of course not bio lah. Yes, I'm not. SPM grade. So guys, macam mana kamu tahu where is your A plus, A or A minus? Based on this lah guys, your bell curve. Mana potong tu, threshold value. That's how they determine what is your grade for SPM. Mereka tengok data yang mana. Data tu malkah kamu. The data is your mark. So where is the mark mostly collected? This is where they set the boundary lah. Okay. So that's how they determine apa limit for A plus, A, A minus macam tu. Tengok data kat mana banyak terkumpul. So you all are the data lah guys. Kamu semua orang dah jadi statistik for them. Tak ada perasan pun. No feeling. You all are just a statistic to them. Just a number. Okay. Nombor saja kat mata mereka when they want to decide the cut off point okay so basically you guys are numbers lah <laughs> yeah so they lah of course but that is the world lah kalau nak tahu grade kamu okay so now that's why i say guys uh what to say statistic won't always tell you the true picture okay when you study deeply lah uh statistic ni tak menunjukkan gambar sebenar there is a lot behind it okay so same with your spm grade lah how they determine it and everything. Okay, so guys, let's say lah. Now, uh, wait now. Nah. Maybe like this, like this, like this. Okay, guys, can you tell me? Graph yang ni, pencong ke kanan or kiri? Which one? Kiri or kanan? Right lah. Yeah, kanan. Guys, can you see how many palang over here? If you try to add up all the value, definitely lima palang versus tiga palang. Which one will give the higher value? Lima palang lah, of course. Walaupun nilai dia lebih rendah, although the value is lower because quantity. Quantity greater than quality, something like that lah. Yang ni, quality high, quantity low. Over here, quantity high, quality low. Macam tu lah. Quality, I, I refer to the frequency lah. Okay. Frequency adalah quality kamu. If peak higher on left, yeah, you must draw out the curve. Bila kamu hubungkan semua titik, then you can see uh, uh, clearly. Kalau kamu nampak terus without draw any curve, quite hard. Okay. You might make careless. Okay. So this one is right skewed. Pencong ke kanan. Okay. Or another one is called positively skewed. Okay, pencong positive lah. Because right is positive direction. Okay, so yeah. So everyone clear up till now? This is all the distribution lah. You all must know everything. Semua perkara, all the types. Clear ah? Okay. So next, uh, I rasa is more on the drawing part lah. Cara lukis graph. Basically it's about that. 
Mm, let me see. Okay, first thing we talk about something lah, guys. Your Q1 median, all that. Isn't it if peak is higher in right? It's why it's cute. Uh, doesn't mean that. You can see over here, Pamisa. Try refer to your textbook. Can you see? Wait, let me see whether I'm showing that. Ah, uh, can you see this one? Wait, am I showing the right thing? Oh, wait, sorry, it's bottom. Wait, ah. Uh. Okay, can you see this one? The green and purple one, guys. Cuba lihat. Hijau and ungu. Can you see for white skewed? White skewed is the green one. Yang ni. Can you see that all the other data are lower? Kebanyakan data ada frekuensi lebih rendah compared to the left hand side. So you see why it's white skewed? Everyone? Can you understand? If you refer your textbook. Ah, so this is why lah. Okay, so ingat, doesn't mean that you must refer to the peak. Kamu kena lihat overall. Okay, secara arm, um, then only interpret whether right skewed or left skewed. Don't just look at one palang and determine. Okay, not like that. Okay, you must see overall. Okay? So, yeah. Uh, other thing, I rasa kita bincang pasal mean and all that lah. So, let's talk about this. So, let's say I got example. Mm, what should I give? Can you all suggest example, a situation to talk about this? Yang ada nilai lah. I don't know what situation to give you all. Anyone? Any data that you can think of, you want to discuss? Okay lah, I got a good one. Marks. Okay, since we are talking about maths, we talk about marks lah. Uh, no need. <laughs> we talk about marka dalam perpeksan. Okay, so now I divide ah. Huh? Okay, so I want to use a real data now, guys. Boleh tak? Saya guna data sebenar. I want to draw this table. Can you all tell me all your marks now? <laughs> now everything exposed here already. Cara saya dapat frekuensi kat sini. I ask all your maths marks. Ah, macam tu. Senang nak dapat data. Okay? But I think you all won't share lah, definitely. Okay, let's say lah, 0 to 20. 20 to 40. 40 to 60, and then 60 to 80, and then 80 to 100. Okay, guys. So let's say lah. Mm, one, three. Ah, it's okay, it's okay. No need to share. You also bunny share. Huh? Thank you, thank you. I appreciate. One, three, five, mm, two. I optimistic a bit now, guys. Saya rasa optimistic sekarang sikit. I think 80 to 100, 9 people lah. Okay? I put 9 lah. Just a figure only. Okay? So now, let's say I want you to calculate the mean for this data. Saya nak kamu cari mean. So how to find the mean, guys? First step, uh, this one SPM A plus grade. SPM grade lah, guys. Gambaran over here. If like this means, uh, country performance, wah, so good lah. This one only 20 people, guys. Kalau kamu nisbahkan kepada satu negara, you see how many A plus you get from here. <laughs> Fine midpoint, very good. Cari titik tengah. Shouldn't be no problem, right, guys? Yeah, midpoint multiply with frequency. You should get this for your midpoint. Okay, hard atas, tambah hard bawah, bahagi dua. Upper limit plus lower limit, divide two. Okay, then uh, times with frequency. Okay, formula there is like this lah. Mean equal to, uh, okay, sum. Okay, hasil tambah frequency darab dengan titik tengah. Frequency times midpoint divide. This one is basically your frequency lah and sum of frequency. Okay, so I think counting should be no problem lah. But guys, huh, don't lazy. Sebab kamu nampak banyak data, you must write huh, one by one, all the steps. Because when you show all of this, then you get one mark. Okay, so you must show apa kali apa, tambah apa kali apa. One thing also cannot be wrong. If one thing wrong, that mark is gone. Okay, so that's why statistic, uh, bab yang berkaitan dengan statistic, you have to be sabar a bit. Okay, you must be patient because ada banyak data nak handle. You got a lot of data to key in. Okay, calculator. 
be careful again bila tekan sebab banyak nak tekan okay a lot to press so you must be careful lah when pressing in your calculator especially variance lah standard deviation all that okay kena hati-hati so now let's say i want to count variance yeah yeah for those that know lah there is a statistic mode tapi for me i use the normal mode lah i tak discover all that in my exam i just key in satu per satu saja I never use the fast way. Okay. So guys, variance. You will, this the formula lah. Okay. Rumus for variance. Something like this. Okay. It should be something very common lah. Cut form 4 also you learn this. It's the, exactly the same formula. Okay. Formula sama only. So now, I want to ask you guys. This kuasa 2, dia belong kepada F atau X? Does the power 2 belong to the F or X? Yes. Okay, ingat lah guys, jangan kuasa duakan frekuensi kamu. You must not power 2 the frequency but the X. Kalau kamu lihat formula ni, kamu akan faham kenapa X. Okay? So not the F ah, is the X. Okay? Common mistake again. Kalau kamu kuasa dua, the wrong number habis. Okay? So that's the only thing lah. Lepas tu jawapan ni, kamu ganti kat sini. Okay? So now guys, how about the DP? How many DP? Ya? Berapa titik per puluhan? Two. Ah. How, never mind, I ask how many significant figure? Berapa angka berarti? 4SF. Maksudnya 5SF. Ah. 5SF. Uh, I think Andy overshoot a bit already. Ya. Wait. Hmm. Uh. Usually lah. Yeah, more means more accurate lah basically. If you put more DP means more accurate. Usually I will suggest 4 DP. 4 titik per puluhan. Okay, 4. Maximum lah. 5 is terlampau banyak already. 4 is the max. Minimum maybe 2 lah. Okay, minimum DP 2, maximum DP 4. Okay, for variance and also standard deviation. Sama. Okay, CCN PRY dan variance concept sama. Okay. So, yeah, basically like that lah. Okay, can I understand guys? Yeah, yeah, I confused just now. I think DP better lah. 4 DP is easier. If we just rewrite, oh, don't lah. That one terlampau already. Cannot, cannot. Don't copy your calculator lah, guys. Don't copy what the calculator show you. Let's say lah. Uh, let me just put a random. Okay, let's say this is your standard deviation. Katakan ini adalah sisian PAY kamu. What will be your answer, guys? Can you type for me based on this value? Cuba type sisian piawai bagi saya. How will you leave your answer based on what I say lah? Uh, Sat, lebih dekat. Sekarang boleh? Huh? How you guys get four? <laughs> Don't scare me. Others lagi? Okay, so, okay, so correct lah, 16.9115, okay, don't, jangan tulis everything lah guys, don't write all of this, definitely very weird, they might minus your mark, okay, 4 dp max, okay, so yeah, basically this is what you should know lah, okay, so now, uh, I think the other basic thing also, if not mistaken, uh, okay, q3, q1, and q2, how to KWA using group data. Standard deviation 2 dp. Can give 4 so 4 titik per bulan. Boleh juga. Okay, should be no problem. Because usually standard deviation nilai dia akan kecil, right? Usually lah standard deviation. It will usually be below 10. Okay, lebih kurang daripada 10 for most of the question. Okay, so usually 4 dp lah enough. 2 dp feel like a bit weird but still can I rasa lah. Kalau schema not so strict on that, should be no problem. Because the answer is still the same. Okay, jawapan masih sama. Hanya accuracy only berbeza. Maximum yang paksi Y boleh dicapai darab 1 over 4 and 3 over 4. Uh, graph jenis apa? Oh, you mean generally? Uh? You mean how big your graph must be? Must be? Size graph ke? Is it what, what you mean, Andy? 
I think so lah. Okay, never mind. We go to the... Uh, okay, Q1, Q2, Q3. So, guys. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, not yet, not yet. To search the Q1, Q3. Yeah. One, to get Q1, guys. Satu per empat kali CF. What is CF, guys? Cumulative frequency. Kekerapan longgokan. Okay. Then how to find Q2? 1 over 2 times CF. Okay, setengah daripada kekerapan longgokan. Q3, 3 over 4 of CF. Uh, ataupun N lah. N2, kekerapan longgokan kamu. Okay. So, yeah. So, basically, kuartil pertama, first kuartil is 25% daripada seluruh data kamu. Okay. Q2 is your middle point, 50% daripada seluruh data kamu. Q3 is 75% from your total data. So guys, I want to ask one thing lah. Adakah ada term macam ni, Q4? Does Q4 exist? Try the thing and see guys. Okay, but is there such thing as Q4? Yes, very good, Haida. Q4 is equal to your maximum. Basically, Q4 adalah nilai maksimum kamu lah. Mengapa? Guys, kalau kamu lihat nisbah ni, 25, 50, 75, yes, 4 over 4 or 100%. So, kalau 100, 100, maksudnya, maksimum lah. Nilai maksimum kamu, maximum value in your data. Okay, yeah, never complete without 100, correct. Okay, so you got five things to find lah guys. Minimum, Q1, Q2, Q3 and maximum. Okay. Bila lukis box plot also very useful. Okay, box plot also you use this. Okay, so guys, I want to ask a question. This Q1, Q3, all this, ah, can I get from this data? Boleh tak saya terus cari dari jadual? Can ah? Yes, cannot. Okay, tak boleh. You must plot what guys? Apa jenis graph? Very good, cumulative or ogive. Okay. Sometimes ah guys, mereka akan suruh kamu lukis this one. Okay. They will ask you to draw a cumulative, yeah of course will be inaccurate a bit lah. Cumulative frequency graph. So guys, this is equal to what ah? Kekerapan longgokan punya graph adalah graph apa? Anyone? Yes, Ojive. So, jangan ingat saja nama Ojive. Don't only think of Ojive. Sometimes the question will ask you to draw this graph. Tiba-tiba kamu panic. What is this graph? It's the same thing. Okay, cumulative frequency is Ojive. Because Pak Y for Ojive is cumulative frequency. Kekerapan longgokan. Okay? But for ungroup data boleh kan? Uh, ungroup data we don't... Ah, yeah, ungroup data can. Sebab... Ungroup data is random number. Tak ada hat atas, hat bawah. There is no limit. So you can count directly. Kamu hanya perlu susun semua nombor tu, urutan menaik. Lepas tu, buat kaedah kamu lah, potong-potong macam tu. Just cut left and right. Sampai tiba kat tengah-tengah. Okay, that is for ungroup data. Yang form 4 punya chapter. But this one, kita ada kaedah. Sebab boleh lukis or jive. Okay, you can draw or jive. Okay, so yeah. So now I think I want to share on technique lah, on drawing graph. You all want a technique? Because I know a lot of you confuse skala, how the graph shape, all of these technical, technical thing you all uh, tak suka kan? Yes, this one, you all might think is very rare, very small thing. But guys, this one can affect your grade in SPM. Trust me. Okay, minus all these few mark can cause a big difference in your grade. So, benda-benda kecil ni kena take note juga. Not only the big things. Okay, small thing can affect also. So, first thing, let us talk about histogram lah. Actually, histogram or frequency polygon, I can group under the same thing. Okay, so, sama saja. Yeah, of course lah. Section B, K2 guys. Prepare this one. Section B, K2. Definitely satu soalan will come. If you see all the state trial, definitely. Okay, 11 to 15 lah, any question. Okay, so now, first thing, uh, we bincang pasal skala lah. Okay, I think scale is the main problem over here. Am I right? So before that, can I draw my histogram like this? Betul ke salah? 
if I draw my histogram like this, can I sambung dengan paksi Y? Yes, wrong. Okay, must leave gap. How big is the gap? Uh, 2cm dari paksi Y. Okay, if you see your graph paper, yeah, two box, two small box lah. Okay, ataupun satu kotak besar, one big box, you must leave. Okay, to draw the, this thing. Don't sambung, jangan sambung. Although technically, dia betul, tapi uh, kamu kena ingat nilai kat sini, the value over here. This is the second thing I want to tell. So guys, uh, adakah mesti mula dengan kosong kat sini? Must it, must start with zero? No. Okay, tak semestinya. Okay, but if you start with zero, kamu akan ada satu masalah. Mengapa? Why will you face a problem? Yes, I will, I will share to you now. Let me share uh, this one. How you going to plot with zero? Wait, uh, I try to draw a graph for you all. Okay, let's say lah guys, histogram kamu macam ni. Katakan je lah. Okay, so guys, let's say lah um, nilai ni 59.5. Lepas tu nilai yang ni 69.5. So guys, kamu boleh lihat lah gap dia. The scale is 10. Am I right? Skala 2 cm kepada 10 unit. Okay, berdasarkan graf. Okay, so guys. Kalau saya letak kosong kat sini. Adakah saya patuhi syarat skala, skala dia kena seragam? Ah, tak patuhi. So this is my point lah guys. But if you check your textbook. ah, Textbook punya graf dia lukis macam ni tau. Tanpa skala seragam. Without the uniform scale, they actually draw. Okay, and you will realize that kalau kamu lihat skema trial pun, yang ni sebenarnya diterima. Actually, some state lah, I see. Okay, usually lah. Yeah, you should actually 49.5 lah. Okay, so guys, kalau kamu label macam ni, salah lah in my opinion. Okay, wrong. Okay, so how you should label? You should label something like this. Wait, ah. Uh. Okay, same graph ah. Uh. I show you the difference between wrong and right. Okay, so yang ni 59.5. Yang ni 69.5. So guys, yang ni. Wait, ah, zero I put wrong. Okay, so now I want to ask you. Kalau nak bagi skala tu seragam. Where should I put the 49.5 guys? Perlu saya letak 49.5 kat sini ataupun 49.5 kat sini. Yang mana betul? Ah uh, asalan tu kat mana sekarang? Where where's the origin? If I zoom in ah, uh, wait ah, uh, I would, I zoom in over here. You see carefully ah uh, guys. Because I don't want to start with zero, you know. Tak mau mula dengan kosong. So guys, make sure ah, where you put your zero, this is the correct graph ah, graph yang betul sekarang. So kat sini, where I mark over here, this should be your 49.5. Okay, yang sini, jangan isi apa-apa. Don't fill in anything. Sebab kalau kamu faham tentang graph, if you understand about graph, the region I say that yang saya berlorek adalah nilai yang mewakili Paksi Y dan Paksi X. The value you put there at the corner will represent your scale for X and Y. Kedua-dua. So where you should put your kosong, sepatutnya kat sini. Because Paksi Y kena mula dengan kosong, right? Am I right, guys? So ini cara yang betul. Okay? Ah, ini cara kamu plot. Jangan letak kosong kat sini. Sebab kamu ingat kosong ni hanya untuk paksi Y. Bukan. It's not only for the Y axis. Dia refer juga pada X axis. Walaupun kamu letak 49.5 betul kat sini, skala dia tak seragam dah. Sebab clash. Kosong tiba-tiba bertembung dengan 49.5. Nilai tak sama kan? Jadi tak boleh lah. Hanya satu nilai saja untuk asalan. So guys, if I ask you all, can you all tell me the asalan coordinate based on what I write here? What is the coordinate Untuk your origin. Anyone? Kalau faham. Very good, Haida. 49.5, kosong. X, Y. X kamu 49.5, Y kamu kosong. 
Do you all understand? So this is why saya label 49.5 sedikit kanan kosong kat atas. Okay guys? Are you clear? This is about the scale factor lah. Eh sorry, the scale problem. Okay, masalah tentang skala-skala ni. Okay, of course the question will give you 2 cm kepada beberapa unit. The question will tell you how many unit. Usually 10 lah kalau tak silap saya. 2 cm to 10 unit. But depends on the question again. Okay. So histogram, I rasa tak ada apa-apa lah. Banyak nak cakap tentang graf sebab uh, sangat senang. Kamu guna pembaris saja dan cantum. This one all cantum lah guys. Jangan kamu tinggal ruang antara palang. There is no space between the bar. All cantum. Only here don't cantum. Okay, others all cantum. Okay, so now I want to ask you guys. X-axis. Apa quantity I plot for the X-axis? Can anyone tell? All this value here ni, mewakili apa? Ah uh, yes, and this sempadan. Yeah, of course, marks lah, correct. Tapi general, ah uh, yes, sempadan or midpoint, correct. Okay, sempadan ataupun titik tengah. You got two option, guys. Jangan ingat histogram dan frequency polygon hanya boleh guna sempadan. Kamu boleh plot guna midpoint juga. Okay, two things possible. Okay, so it depend on what you like lah. Yang mana kamu nak guna? Upper boundary, lower boundary ataupun midpoint. Yang mana mana pun boleh. Okay. But make sure you plot correctly lah. Nilai tu kena betul. But for me, saya rasa sempadan atas, sempadan bawah tu lebih senang lah. Because why guys, if you look at your graph lah. I draw again. Let's say saya lukis lebih besar sekarang. Katakan graph kamu macam ni. Okay. Semua titik ni guys. All of this. Ini mewakili apa guys yang saya tengah lukis? Ya, berdasarkan pilihan kamu. Based on your option. Yes, the boundary. Lower or upper. Okay, so mana midpoint guys? Midpoint is over here. Yang saya tanda yang ni. All of this is the midpoint. Okay, ni, uh, jawab dia masih akan sama. Jangan risau. It will follow the scale one. Okay, dia takkan lari if you count correctly. Kalau kamu kira betul. Okay, so this is what I mean lah. Macam mana kamu nak plot. Okay, how to plot. So you can choose to plot all of this. Yang ni. Ataupun. Yang biru ni pun boleh. Okay, tapi saiz palang kamu. Kalau kamu pilih lah guna plot guna yang biru tu. If you choose to plot midpoint. The one blue I circle. You must know the width lah guys. Kamu kena tahu lebar graph tu sampai mana. Should be no problem lah. Sebab data ada dalam jadual dah. You have to find the upper boundary and lower boundary okay by the way for starting point x axis should we take upper boundary or lower boundary first you mean for histogram and the this one do you mean for this graph ojaif and this ojaif always upper boundary guys ojaif selalu guna sempadan atas no sempadan bawah okay always sempadan atas this one uh, this value will be lower boundary of course lah. The one I circle. Yes, Ojaif is all upper boundary. Tak ada lower boundary. Ojaif. Okay, this value is lower lah. The one I circle. Okay, Andy? Okay, yeah. Huh? So this is how we draw lah guys. Histogram. Okay, but now a bit more complicated. Kalau soalan suruh combine. Histogram tambah frequency polygon. They want to draw all in one diagram. So how? So I show you here. Okay, so bila suro lukis frequency polygon, midpoint will be important. Mengapa? Do you all still remember just now how I draw the frequency polygon? Saya ambil semua titik-titik ni dan sambungkan, right? I connect all these dots. All this cross I put is what, guys? Apa quantity dia? The cross I put. Yes, midpoint. So that's why when Soan asked to draw frequency polygon, midpoint is important. But if histogram, you can choose both. Okay, kamu boleh pilih mana-mana. But frequency polygon saja, midpoint penting. Okay, titik tengah. So guys, kalau kamu connect lah, guna pembaris. Okay, dah. Okay, macam ni lah. So guys, is this a frequency polygon? Betul ke tak? 
Am I right? No, ah. Uh? So you need two more points. Dua lagi titik. How to get the two more points, guys? Kat bawah ni. You have to find two extra value. Dua nilai tambahan which the jadual takkan bagi kat kamu. So how to know this value, guys? Macam mana tahu dua yang ni? Anyone? What is it representing again? Uh, no. Plus 0 0.5 is to find upper boundary. Anyone? Wait, ah. Uh. Mm, start. No, guys, it's midpoint. Okay, not upper boundary, lower boundary, guys. Midpoint kat sini, kan? Am I right? First class midpoint. Yang saya tanda tu, kamu kena tolak dengan scale, skala kamu untuk x-axis. Minus your x-axis scale. Baru kamu boleh dapat nilai ni. So, it's basically a midpoint. Untuk class yang tak wujud. Okay? Uh, class that don't have kekerapan, kamu kena create class 2 di mana kekerapan dia kosong dengan satu midpoint. Okay, example lah. Let's say this class is 20 to 25. So guys, untuk titik ni, boleh tak kamu predict apa had atas, had bawah? What is the upper limit, lower limit for this class? Kalau kamu tengok size class ni, can anyone tell? Apa nilai dia? Huh? 10 and 15? Yeah, 15 to 20. Okay, this should be the other class. Sebelum kelas pertama. So guys, apa titik tengah untuk yang ni? What is the midpoint for 15 to 20? Anyone? Titik tengah, 15 to 20. Eh, where got 18? 17.5 guys. Okay? You should get 17.5. Okay? So now, class ni, apa midpoint guys? What's the titik tengah? For this one, 20 to 25, what is the midpoint? Eh, yeah, 22.5. Okay, so guys, what is the scale here? 5 lah. Okay, kalau kamu cuba bandingkan. 22.5, tolak 17.5, 2 cm, 5 unit. Okay, no, it's not starting from 20. This one is 20. Over here. Okay, tapi titik ni, the one I circle, this one, nilai dia 17.5. The midpoint, titik tengah untuk satu kelas yang tak ada kekerapan. Okay, a class which don't have frequency, you have to plot the midpoint as the x. Do you guys understand? It's not the lower boundary, upper boundary, salah. Kalau lower boundary, upper boundary, kamu tanda x, kalah takkan seragam dah, you can see. Okay, it's not equal. This one, yang ni ke? Yang ni konsep sama lah. Katakan, kamu kena tahu kelas ni dulu lah. Okay? Katakan yang ni kelas bila nak guna lower. Lower apa bila lukis semua palang ni, Afika? Yang ni saja Untuk histogram. Okay? Frekuensi polygon guna midpoint. Okay? Semua X ni midpoint. Titik tengah. Ah, Yang ni pun midpoint. Titik tengah. Okay, yang sambung kat paksi X tu. The one connecting the X axis is also a midpoint. Okay. Tapi macam mana dapat yang ni? Sama konsep. Midpoint, titik tengah kelas yang ni, kamu tambah dengan 5. Kenapa 5? Sebab, tengok beza guys. Midpoint kelas yang tak wujud, the class that don't have any frequency, 17.5. The first class that have a certain frequency, 22.5. Jadi beza dia apa guys? 5. Maksudnya, skala kamu 5 lah. Okay, maksudnya nilai ni akan jadi, katakanlah midpoint untuk kelas yang ni 64. Saya tak kira pun, just a random value. Titik tengah 64. Maksudnya, untuk titik kat bawah ni, kamu tambah 5 saja. Maksudnya, nilai ni adalah 69. Okay guys, baru kamu sambungkan kat bawah. Baru lengkap frekuensi poligon. Alright? Do you guys understand? So make sure dua point yang sentuh x-axis untuk frekuensi poligon tu adalah midpoint. Bukan SA or SB or LBUB. Okay? is midpoint. Hmm. Okay? 
So basically graph dia macam ni lah. Semua perkara tentang frekuensi poligon and uh, histogram. Okay. Kadang-kadang mereka akan suruh lukis two in one. Ataupun satu pun boleh. Okay. So kena mahir lah semua yang ni. Okay. So now yang paling controversial lah guys. Ojaif. Am I right? Paling suka nak lukis Ojaif. Sebab dia bukan garis lurus. Okay. Dia curve. Lengkung. Okay. So whenever lengkung come, pasti akan ada masalah. Okay. So first thing, remember Paksi X. Ah uh, Guys, so far everyone okay ya. Uh? Sampai uh, sebelum tu. Sebelum saya nak masuk Ojai. Okay ya. Uh? Pastikan boleh follow. Hope you all not lost over there. Okay ya. Uh? So X axis, remember sempadan atas. Apa apa boundary. Masa. Uh? No other choice. Midpoint tak boleh. Only this one. When they ask Ojai. Okay. So, uh, I rasa untuk cari yang ni tak, 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 tak susah pun. Just plus 0.5 only to the upper limit. Okay. Then you get the answer. Okay. So guys, Y axis is 1 ah. Huh? Ojai. Paksi Y. Apa? Yes. Remember, cumulative. Kamu kena cari cumulative. Okay. Walaupun soalan tak suruh kamu cari cumulative, longgokan tu, biasanya mereka akan suruh lah. Kat part A tu, mereka akan suruh kamu isi jadual kan. You have to complete the table, baru lukis graf. Okay, so make sure table tu lah yang paling penting. Kalau table salah, habis graf. Sebab semua nilai graf tu berdasarkan table. Okay, sebab statistik ni, kalau kamu kira frekuensi salah, cumulative pasti salah lah. Okay, frekuensi data yang kamu kira tu kena betul. Okay, kalau dia bagi data yang random lah, tak bagi hard atas, hard bawah siap kat kamu. If they never give directly all the upper limit, lower limit, they just give a random number macam tu. Ah, uh, Bila kira frekuensi, kena hati-hati lah. Sebab kalau kamu kira satu terlebih, satu terkurang, habis. Okay, so that is the danger of this chapter. Bab ni boleh cuai. Bukan susah, tapi cuai. Okay, all about careless only. Tapi careless tu boleh menyebabkan banyak marka hilang sebab all the question is related ok part C pun related sebab ojaif mereka akan suruh kamu kira apa guys Q1, Q2, Q3 where do you get the value dari graph so graph salah semua salah lah ok so must be careful lah ok so cumulative frequency ok so now on the technique of drawing so guys again Does it mean x axis kena mula with zero? Must it start with zero? X axis? No, ah, huh? correct. Good. Okay, so your old jive basically, kamu boleh lukis macam ni, or you can start from here also boleh. Okay, depending lah mana titik permulaan kamu. Where is your starting upper boundary? Okay, guys, but make sure huh? nilai ni. Bila frekuensi kosong, the class mereka takkan bagi kat kamu. They won't give you the class. Kamu kena cari class tu sendiri. Baru kamu tahu apa sempalan atas bagi class tu yang tak ada frekuensi. Okay, they won't give you the class where the frequency is zero. You must add one on top. Okay, then only you know the upper boundary of that unknown class. Anna, yeah? we have to find upper boundary and low boundary, right? Uh, for this one, only upper. Ojai is only upper, no lower. Ah, okay. The y axis will be the cumulative uh, frequency, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. Make sure cumulative lah. Okay. So your shape basically like this lah, guys. Something like this. Usually kita nak start with touching the asalan lah. Okay, the origin usually. Tapi kalau lukis macam ni pun betul. Okay, but make sure your value is correct lah. Okay, so now. Uh, covered on that. So now, cara nak lukis lengkong tu. So you guys, can you all tell me what is the problem you face bila lukis ojaif tu? Can anyone tell me? Uh? Sekarang kita bincang pasal graph tu sendiri. The graph. The line this. won't go accurately. Yeah, I know. Gagah, gagah tangan. Okay. So maybe I give you a tips lah guys. First thing, maybe if you're used to the flexible ruler. Am I right? Those flexible graph ruler then can lah if you're used to it. If you really feel freehand kamu tak bagus, guna alat tu. Okay, accuracy reduce. Yes, of course. 
when you find Q1, Q2, Q3 ya guys, jawapan tak tetap tahu dia akan ada range dalam skema. So jangan risau. The examiner already adjusted for all that. Sebab setiap ojaif kamu tak akan sama. It won't be the same. So Q1, Q2, Q3 semua berbeza. Okay. Saya kalau lukis ojaif terbalikan ke atas. Maksudnya kamu mula dari atas ke bawah ke? Izati. Kamu buat macam ni. <laughs> Wah. Pro lah. Flex ruler are actually hard to use to be honest. Yeah, it's hard also. That's why I say freehand is the first option guys. Okay, freehand always the first option. Okay, lebih senang lah. One shot. Ah guys, one more thing ah. Jangan ingat bila buat lengkong when you draw the curve ah. Don't draw like this. Don't start, stop. Lepas tu kamu sambung sikit. Lepas tu kamu stop. Then you start again. It won't be smooth curve. Remember, graph one of the criteria to score is smooth curve. Okay, lengkong dia kena reaching. Kalau kamu stop start, the examiner can see already. You, you do like this, then you stop. Then you continue. Then you do like this. Don't divide to part one shot. Then only smooth curve. Uh, maybe you use permadam, right? Am I right? Kamu akan padam-padam. Nanti kertas pun tak nampak okay. Oh, can lah. Uh, maybe you do some hiding a bit lah. You do. Ah, one more thing guys. Sharp pencil lah, please. Kena guna pencil tajam. Jangan guna pencil yang tak tajam. Why? Pencil tak tajam will give you dark. Ojaif kamu must be light. Okay, don't give a bold ojaif. Wrong. Okay, must be light. Yeah, jangan tekan. Okay, why guys? If you know ah, something, if tekan, let's say lah my ojaif is like this. Okay, one lah. Then suddenly ah, like this. Guys, this one is wrong ah. Kalau pemeriksa nampak ada overlap kat satu garis, is wrong. Okay, there must not be overlapping line like this. Tak boleh ada kawasan where it's darker than the other. All must be same. Okay, when you draw. So make sure it's one time only. And must be not dark pencil, must be a light pencil. Uh, mechanic... I rasa examiner will say BB or 2B, kan? Am I right, guys? Yang allow BB dan 2B. For, uh, mereka akan tulis ke atas soalan tu, usually. Use BB and 2B pencil. Uh. Means use that lah, guys. Jangan pandai-pandai use others. Question itself tell you already. So, follow. Uh, mechanic, it depends on the lead again lah. What kind of lead you use. Wait, just now people ask something. Wait, huh? Oh, uh, wait, where is the question now? So, can I start Lukis curve kat mana? Uh, Ojaif ke, Afrika? Kalau Ojaif, kamu boleh mula macam ni pun boleh kat asalan. Kalau nak mula kat sini pun boleh. Tapi nilai dia kena sama lah. Your starting value must be the same. Maksudnya, skala kat sini kamu kena tambah sendiri lah. You must add your own scale. Kalau kamu tak mau dia cantum dengan asalan. To get the uniform scale. Okay? Ah, macam tu. Dua-dua pun boleh. Okay, guys? So, make sure you take note lah. All these points when you're drawing your ojive. If can lah. Cuba luangkan sedikit masa practice on your ojive. Okay? I rasa student-student art kat sini tak susah lah. But the science team student will suffer a bit. Because science team dia tak ambil seni. So, tangan dia, what to say, tegang sikit. A bit tension. You must relax your hand. Then only artistic hand. Baru boleh dapat lengkung tu. Kalau tegang sangat, cannot. You must relax the hand. Then only the curve akan datang. Okay, practice make perfect guys, always. Ah, uh, For those that not science team, take med scan lah. Sebab biasa ni. Those who have hobby, uh, if you have hobby, then good lah. It helps a lot. Okay. So, all clear guys on everything? <laughs> no one lah. Straight or curve again. The debate come. Straight line, curve line. Amali. <laughs> clear, huh? Okay. So, I think basically I tell everything already lah in this chapter. Very clear. Okay. Crystal clear. Good. Okay. Uh, basically, I think that's it lah. Let me check anything. Mm, ah, one more thing I want to tell about measure of dispersion also lah. <laughs> no more Amali vibes. 
I think you all miss the time you all in Bengkel, right, guys? Am I right? Tak masuk makmal science dah lepas ni. Unless you pursue in science field lah. In your future, then you go into lab again lah. But other than that, no more. <laughs> It's a very sad feeling. Okay. So now, uh, usually they ask lah, which measure, I want to explain on this lah, central tendency, Hmm, wait, let me think. Um, okay lah, tapas, saya tak mau terangkan yang ni. Because of the time. Guys, this question I will terangkan when I teach Form 4, Chapter 8. Benda sama saja. sebab saya mau bincang soalan. Okay, saya bincang yang ni next week lah. Form 4, Chapter 8, class. Okay? Next week ah, Next week, Thursday. We talk about that one later. So that I can discuss the exercise with you all. Okay, at least we see some question lah. Mm, okay, we see this one. Okay, so you can see lah, first question. Using a scale, tengok, soalan akan bagi tau skala. 2cm to 10kg, horizontal axis. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forget to talk about that actually. Very simple, Andy. Same concept only. Guys, PAT, percentile ke 80. How to count? 80% times CF, cumulative frequency, kekelapan longgokan. Nilai yang kamu dapat adalah nilai kat paksi Y, Y axis. Later, kamu kena cari nilai sepadan kat paksi X untuk dapat jawapan. Okay? So, this the technique lah. Percentile maksudnya percentage. So, that's why divide 100. Okay? Same concept, 80% like that. So, it's basically macam... Q3 lah. So, if you guys understand, Q3, kalau saya nak tulis dalam bentuk P, apa nilai dia kat bawah? Can anyone tell me? When they ask questions on interpreting the graph, how many students come late to school? Uh, God lah, but I think one mark or two mark only. Shouldn't be much. Okay, later you can see lah. I think that one more on Form 4, Chapter 8 lah, if not mistaken. Okay. Because this graph all, nothing much to interpret. Tak banyak. Only this one, usually. Mereka akan tanya. Uh, that one got lah. Just now, I, I told you guys the shape of the distribution semua tu. Bentuk taburan, positive, negative, all of those lah. That is interpret lah, basically. Okay, okay, take care. Get well soon. COVID fighter. <laughs> Keep on fighting. Don't worry. Everything will come back well. Okay, guys, come back here. Q3, P berapa? Nilai kat bawah. Very good, P75. Why, guys? Just now only I told. Q3 is 75%. P75, how will you count? 75% times, yes, or 3 over 4, CF. 3 over 4 is your Q3 lah. Itu sebab Q3 is P75. So, Andy, do you get it now? It's the same thing only. Label saja berbeza. Satu in terms of fraction, pecahan. Satu in terms of percentage, peratus. Okay? So, we go back to the question. Huh? Yeah, correct. 3 over 4 times 100%, 75. Hmm. Okay, so this one. They ask you to complete the table. So, basically, kamu kena dapat semua nilai from the ogive and transfer it to your table. Okay? So, you must pandai-pandai a bit lah, guys. Okay, so now, uh, first one, they already tell you. So guys, can I know the answer for this one? First column, first row, what's the answer? Cumulative frequency, untuk class 40 to 49, 0, very good. How about the frequency? 0 also. Of course lah guys, starting must be 0, 0. No other value. If you're talking about ojaif lah, sebab ojaif kena sentuh paksi, paksi Y. Sama dengan kosong. Y axis must be zero. That's why all the value is zero. If kamu ada nilai, maksudnya salah lah. Uh, graph yang kamu lukis tu salah. That is one way to check. Okay. So next class, can you all tell me? What should I fill in here? Apa nilai? Very good. Follow only the order. So after that, I think should be no problem lah guys. Kamu 
equal size are 60 60 60 to 60 and 70 to 79 yeah, yeah. okay 80 to 89 mm, okay. 90 to 100 99 okay. 100 to 109 okay so this one free mark lah guys if you know the spacing java tu betul then should be no problem okay so now kalau berdasarkan ogive you can get your cumulative frequency okay so guys can you read for me what is the cumulative frequency here untuk data kedua this one testing on your graph skill okay two yang ni seven very good this one uh 14 16 16 yeah 16 this one 26 26 very good uh maybe i must scroll last up last one bit. last one i think that's uh this one 37 i think so uh is it not clear for you all because here is quite clear wait let me zoom in ah uh, what is this one yang ni kedua terakhir ada you can see now yeah 37 okay guys middle point 37.5 kat sini 37.5 i think your brightness too high already so satu jarak ke bawah 37 guys that's why you must print out the notes am i right kalau kamu print out pdf yang saya hantar tak susah lah Okay, you must print out the notes. Baru senang. Anything about graph, you have to print out. Sebab nanti susah bagi kamu lihat secara macam ni. Okay, graph you must print out. Ah, kalau dah buat before end senang jawab lah. Tapi kena rajin <laughs> sikit lah. Ane. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, why? Right. Ane, one small help can send the PDF again ah, the group. Thank you. Ah, okay, later I send back lah. Cause now. Okay. Now so guys. How to count the frequency now? Can you all tell me? Second column, dapat apa? Kekerapan? Okay, how about the third one? Third one, interesting. Eh, hey, hey, people struggle already. Yes, five. Where everyone get nine? Guys, frequency saja. Seven, kamu kena tolak dengan the previous one. Eh, hey, sorry, I tolak the wrong one. Kamu kena tolak yang ni. That's how you get five. Okay. 9 10 11 3 okay very good okay so this would be the answer anyone have problem how to get this usually dari frequency kamu akan cari frequency longgokan am i right kekerapan longgokan tapi sekarang soalan dia terbalik dari longgokan nak cari balik frequency is the opposite okay don't get it izati senang tak ada saya tunjuk balik hmm, purple Okay, is that it? Kosong dua ni alasa tak ada problem kan? Am I right? Untuk dapat dua yang ni, zero tu, yang last column. Okay kan? Oh, oh you mean no? Maksudnya tak ada masalah. Okay, means tak ada apa-apa nak explain lah. Okay, so now, uh, what they ask now? Okay, kena lukis uh, okay. histogram. Okay, histogram. So guys, all the info kat sini dah. Okay, everything is given to you already. Kamu kena lukis saja. Guys, I cannot draw here ah, sebab takkan accurate. Nanti, I have all the solution here. I will send in the group. Untuk graph tu, you can refer. Okay, because kalau saya lukis graph, ambil masa. Okay, just now I explain everything already. Okay, so graph shouldn't be a problem lah. Okay. So guys, again, guna apa? X-axis. Maxi X, kamu plot apa? Histogram. Recall. Guna apa? Okay, midpoint boleh, can. Okay, tapi ya, Afrika, uh, kamu kena lukis jadual baru lah kalau macam tu. You need to draw a separate column for midpoint. Okay, baru kamu boleh dapat semua data. Kalau kamu lihat terus dan jawab pun boleh. Tak perlu tunjuk pengiraan. Also can. Tapi kalau kamu rasa Ane. boleh cuai, ya yeah, why? Ane, midpoint you have to divide right? Ya, yeah. lower limit plus upper limit divide to. Okay, ya yeah, boundary also can. No problem. Okay, so everyone clear? Any problem? Y axis is this one, ah? frequency not cumulative. Frequency only. 
Okay, guys, clear. Huh? Okay, so now they ask you to state the number of people. Okay, I show you the graph lah. Lebih senang. Okay, guys, so this is the graph lah. Kalau kamu lukis uh, yang ni. Okay, so question ask you state the people mass less than 70 kg. So can anyone tell me the answer? Kurang dari 70 kg. Bilangan orang. Cuba lihat graph. So what will be your answer? Uh, wait, uh, let me see. Eh, how you get nine? Guys, mana 70 kg less than? The cutting off point should be this one. Am I right? Yes, yeah, should be five, correct. Eh, no, 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 not five, wrong. Guys, lebih kurang dari 70 kg. Means these two lah. Five and two. Kamu kena tambah. So final answer, you should get seven. Yeah, do you guys understand? Ah, cut off point is the line I draw. Okay, because 69.5, kamu boleh anggap sebagai 70 lah. Okay, is the same value. Hanya dua bar saja selepas, eh sorry, sebelum 70. Okay, so nilai dia seven lah, two plus five. Okay, understand? Okay, ah, good. So we done lah, guys. First question, habis sedi. This one all trial twenty twenty two question, ah, guys. Why? Anne, I have a doubt. Why, Why got what two doubt? plus five? Why? I can't understand. Hey, I explain again. Uh, this one. They say mass less than seventy kg means anything to the left hand side, lah. Less than 70 kg. 70 kg is the line I draw here. 70 kg. So how you count less than 70 kg? This value plus this value lah. So it's 2 plus 5. So answer is 7. Okay? Okay, and I understand. So you must refer to the graph lah. Okay, so now, Pahang. Uh, they ask you to complete the table. Okay, guys, I think this should be no problem again lah for you all. Okay. So, guys, if you all want to try, what is the first value here? Can anyone tell me? Sempalan atas for the second class. What should I feel? Yeah, we good. 49.5. Lepas tu, kamu teruskan saja. Okay, tambah 10 je. Everything following plus 10, plus 10 and continue. Okay, this one? Uh, wait. Tell me this value. Yang ni, the ketiga. What's the cumulative? Ketiga, Andy. Yes, nine. Okay, means you all know lah how to count. Eh, mengapa lima? Sekarang dari frekuensi ke cumulative, Afika. Bukan terbalik. Okay, so tujuh tambah dua. You get nine. Okay? So, lepas tu kamu complete sajalah jadual kamu. So, now, they ask you draw or jive. So, do you see, guys? Soalan suruh cari sempalan atas, kenapa? Sebab bantu kamu untuk plot ojaif lah. Because ojaif can only use upper boundary, sempalan atas. And also, cumulative. That's why they ask you cari cumulative. Okay, sebab nak bantu kamu plot paksi Y, your Y axis. Okay, again, follow the scale as always. 2CM to 10, 2CM to 10, must follow. Okay, so guys, uh, what value will you start with? Let's say axis kamu macam ni lah. What value will you start with? Nilai kat sini. Kamu akan guna apa? Very good. 39.5. Okay. Uh, yeah, 39.5. This question actually kind of bit lah guys. Sebab mereka mula dengan frekuensi kosong. Usually the question won't give you class yang tu. Kamu kena cari. You have to find it out. Okay. Ah, uh, thirty-nine point five, Mirinda, because the zero cumulative frequency, the upper boundary is thirty-nine point five. Okay, so you should get thirty-nine point five lah. So nilai ni is thirty-nine point five. Then kamu continue lah, thirty-nine point five, forty-nine, fifty-nine point five, sixty-nine point five until the end. Okay, y axis of course start with zero lah. Okay, then you go up. Okay, kamu pergi atas. Okay, 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay, this one cumulative, guys. Ingat, because ojive. 
CF kekapan longgokan. Okay guys, are you clear this one? Basically, you all must draw lah guys. Kamu kena practice nak draw. I cannot draw this for you because it's a curve. Okay, if you want to see the answer, you should get like this lah. If not zero, so start from 29.5. I uh, if not zero, yeah, if not zero, correct. You must class sebelum the 39.5 lah. So minus 10. So kamu kena mula 29.5. Your frequency will be zero. All right. Ah. So this question they kind a bit lah. They give you. Ah, guys, there. This is a live sample for y'all. Saya lukis. Can you see, guys? This is how your curve must be smooth like this. And make sure one more thing. I forget to tell just now. Must pass to every point. Ah, kena lalui setiap titik. Ah, actually a bit of improvise. First time saya buat tak jadi, so saya padam sikit lepas tu buat balik. Okay, you can see that there are no dark lines. Tada apa apa overlap. Okay, and they are passed through all the point. Ah, lifted lah a bit. Okay, ah guys, one more thing ah. Kalau kamu tarik sikit macam ni, is it correct? Kalau kamu terlepas titik ahe tu sikit, if I draw my line a bit more. From the last dot, yes, wrong. Okay, sebab saya tahu kamu shock kan bila lukis ojai. If you all feel very woo like this, doh macam ni ah like that. Lepas tu ah the the overshot the last point sebab shock sangat. You draw very nice. So kalau kamu lepas macam ni sedikit pun ah habis ah very very painful to take sebab kamu dah buat semua betul everything correct. But because of the small thing, kat sini habis. Hmm. So make sure jangan shock sangat when you plot the ojai. Okay. Calm and steady when you plot. Then you can get the perfect curve. Okay. So this is how you draw lah guys. You can see over here guys. I didn't start with over here. Anna. Yeah. My school teacher tell if you put the X right, the teacher say mm. put mildly. I mean like put don't show like obviously you put the X show it like you you put the X but you put like a uh, small la uh, small X like yeah that. yeah so, I feel also I should put smaller correct okay so guys X to jangan bagi terlalu besar lah if can put a bit smaller. Buwan kalau kita lukis dan pesong sikit line tu dia akan affect semua kan. Kalau kita lukis pesong, pesong sikit tu macam mana? Oh, ya, ya. Pastilah dia akan efek nilai Q1, Q2, Q3. Tapi kalau kamu sambungkan semua titik dengan betul, saya rasa tak ada masalah lah. Okay. But of course guys, over here lah. Let's say I focus over here. I share with you all something. Okay, graph tip lah. Tip graph. Katakan lah nilai Q2. Adalah dalam lingkungan kat sini. Okay, assume your Q2 value is over here. So guys, adakah semua orang akan lukis graph like this? Kecerunan garis tu exactly like mine, 100%. Dia boleh jadi macam ni sikit pun boleh. Okay, a bit out also can. Maybe kamu akan lukis sikit ke bawah lepas tu pergi ke atas. So of course will affect lah guys, sikit nilai tu plus minus. Zero point, maybe one point zero pun boleh. Okay, plus minus one point zero or zero point five lah, the best. Okay, yeah, he got COVID, sadly. COVID, COVID, not pain. Okay, so this the tips lah how to draw the graph. So no need to debate after exam about the nilai. What nilai? Yeah, COVID is pain too also. So guys, are you clear on the graph here? What I do? Oh, yeah, yeah, no need to debate. Surely we'll have range one. As long your graph tak lari banyak, then it should lie within the range. Okay? Sometimes, right, guys, when you get your Q1, Q2, Q3 lah, maybe you might face this situation. Maybe, oh, yo, I don't know how to draw this way now. Very thin. 
Ane, ane, tiran hef Govita. Yeah. Okay, like this, guys. Guys, do you face this kind of situation? Kadang-kadang Q1 tu akan ada di tengah-tengah dua garis kecil. Am I right? Ah, maksudnya kamu kena ah bundalkan kalau boleh kepada yang satu lagi or you lebih kurang because usually answer range dia akan dalam tu so tak perlu spesifik sangat okay one tempat perpulan cukup dah jangan pergi sampai dua okay you cannot wait until two dp graph kamu hanya boleh sampai one dp saja okay satu titik perpulan saja jangan tiba-tiba muncul jawapan two dp if you get two dp round off bundalkan kepada yang terdekat okay guys that's one more tip lah Clear, huh, guys? Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, anything special over yes. here? Mm, this one. Okay. This one counting only. No graph. Okay, nice. Wow, so many like sign means good. Okay. So now, uh, I think midpoint should be no problem, lah, guys. So, guys, can you tell me? Titik tengah yang pertama. What you all get? Apa nilai kamu? First midpoint? Huh? 25 only ah. Uh. 25.5. Okay. So make sure you all know how to find ah uh, all of this. Lower limit plus upper limit divide 2. Hal atas tambah hal bawah bagi 2. Okay? This is all your lower limit. This is all your upper limit. Alright? So now, how about the B? B mereka suruh cari min. So guys, again, min should be no problem lah. Kamu darab semua nilai ni. Times all the value over here, tambah semua, add everything up. Bahagi dengan jumlah kekerapan, total over here. Okay? So, itu cara kamu cari min lah, tak susah pun. Okay? But make sure you write out all the steps lah guys, kena tulis semua, baru dapat marka. Ah, So, now I, what I want to discuss is this one, number three. Part tiga ni interesting. This is the question I wanted to ask just now lah. Which measure of central tendency should be used? Okay, guys. So, can you tell me? Mana kena guna untuk data macam ni? There is only two options lah, guys. Dua jawapan saja. Mean ataupun IQR. Interquartal range. So, what is your answer? One of these. For this question lah, guys. Which one should you use? Others? Correct. Okay, guys. Mean is the answer, huh? not IQL. Jawapan dia mean. There is a reason. Because uh, depends on you, Andy. If you want to be organ organized, kalau nak tersusun, you draw the jadual siap-siap lah. Lepas tu tambah semua nilai letak kat bawah jadual. Lepas tu terus guna formula K lah. It's that when they give an up, they won't give up. What? This up, the the collection and then the number of students, they won't give that one ah. This like one example. given. This is the question. Okay. This whole thing is the question. We so have to given. make one more jadual by, by whom lah. Uh, this one, the question give you the jadual only. You just need to fill in the empty space over here. All oh, the five. Uh, usually, no need to draw one. They will draw for you. Uh, yeah, sometimes they are not generous, but hopefully not this time. Lah. Which method is better? Use jadual or use... Oh, yeah. If you want to use the formula, also can. But I feel like formula faster. Lah, because no need to draw all the jadual. All. Formula a bit cepat. Times everything, divide plus everything at the bottom, press calculator. Okay? Easier lah. Because sometimes, right, jadual, maybe you can EC wrongly. So, you might get mistake. Okay, so come back to see, uh, guys. Reason is because there is no extreme value in the data. That's why we use mean. Tak ada nilai extreme dalam data yang diberi. What is extreme value, guys? Pernah dengar tak perkataan ni? Outlier. I don't know in BM lah what is called. Outlier. Ah, macam seribu. Kalau kamu bandingkan seribu dengan semua nilai ni, dia jauh lebih besar. So, this is what mean by extreme value or outlier. Okay? 
Ah, uh, yeah, menengah rendah pun pernah belajar. Ah, uh, no outlier means we use ah uh, mean, if not mistaken. Kalau tak ada nilai yang terlampau besar guna mean. Okay, there is explanation. I can explain for you. Julat kuatil bila ada outlier, opposite. When have outlier, use interquartile. When don't have outlier, use mean. Okay, example lah guys. They say use mean when no outlier, right? Oh, maybe I confused, sorry. Okay, so now they say mean when no outlier lah. So why is it like that? Mengapa macam tu? Do you guys still remember mean formula? Dia macam ni kan? So guys, assume lah, katakan tiba-tiba outlier muncul kat sini. Dia akan pengaruhi nilai jawapan mean tak? If suddenly got outlier, enter the data. Nilai yang terlampau besar tu dikira. Will it affect the mean? Yes or no? Huh? Not much? Are you sure? Yes, of course affect. Pasti will affect. Guys, see your formula. Kalau outlier masuk, dia akan darab dengan frekuensi dia. Pasti nilai ke atas akan jadi besar. The on top value will come a lot. Maksudnya, jawapan will come a lot. Yes, that's why the explanation is like that. Kamu guna mean sebab tak ada uh, extreme value. Okay, if you use mean, kalau ada extreme value, it will affect your mean. Itu sebab jawapan dia no extreme value. Can you guys understand? That's why we use mean. Outlier in BM, I forget already, I'm not sure on the term. Nilai yang terlampau besar lah, I say. Ataupun terlampau kecil pun boleh. That is also considered outlier. Okay? Compare with the set of data lah. Too big or too small, kita kena refer pada sesuatu kan? Untuk bagi tahu dia terlampau besar ataupun terlampau kecil. Okay? So you must refer back to your data that given. Okay? So now guys, uh, how about IQR? So guys, can I ask you? IQR, is it affected by extreme value or not? Adakah dia akan dipengaruhi? Okay. So definitely no lah. Sebab tadi mean is affected, right? So that's why IQR not affected. So guys, simple example. Katakanlah, ori data yang ni. Original data like this. Let's say new data masuk satu outlier yang besar sangat. I show you all the proof. Ah. Kamu cuba cari IQR guna yang ni. Let's say 1000. Guys, apa formula IQR? Can you all tell me? Apa rumus dia? You all should know this already. Yes, Q3 minus Q1. So guys, untuk data pertama ni, what is your Q3? Ah? Apa nilai Q3 kamu? Uh, wait, let me see. Ah. Eh, no lah. Count again? Yes, yeah, 6. Q3, you should get 6. Anyone don't know how to get 6? This one basic from form 4. Asas. Okay, so if you know what is Q1 for this one. Okay, very good, 2.5. So guys, apa IQR kat sini, you can count and prove to yourself. Yang ni kamu akan dapat 3.5. Okay, so now let us compare. Kita bandingkan IQR ni dengan new data to see whether affected or not. So guys, can you all tell me uh, IQR untuk new data? Eh, sorry, Q3 untuk new data. What you all get? New data punya Q3. Anyone? Q3. Okay. Wait, maybe my example terlalu besar dah. Wait dah guys. I think my example too big already the extreme value. Terlalu besar dah. Tak logic pun. I think I should not put thousand lah. I think saya perlu letak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. I think I should use maybe 20 lah. Okay, more realistic lah guys. Okay, 20. Extreme value compared to the rest lah. Okay, uh, not really, it depends what is your extreme value lah, bergantung kepada apa yang kamu letak. Okay, this is an example only, that's why jawapan dia, okay, you should get 13.5 lah. 
Q3. So guys, Q1, DAPA APA, 2.5. So IQR, you should get 11 lah. Okay. If you compare lah guys, of course got a uh, difference. Ada perbezaan 11 and 3.5 if not mistaken. But perbezaan dia tak sangat banyak lah. If you try to compare lah. Okay, it's not such a big difference. Okay, that's why mereka kata IQR is used when extreme value is present. Okay, guys, do you understand? IQR dia guna bila extreme value present so that you can see the difference. Boleh nampak perbezaan from the ORI data to the new data. Uh, okay, so this is the example lah. Okay, to understand only. Okay, guys. So maybe we discuss few objective lah. Lepas tu boleh end dah. We just discuss a few simple objective. Let me see ya. Huh? Saya pilih. Hmm, okay. So this one guys. Can anyone tell the answer? Mereka tanya bilangan kereta yang diguna dalam penyiasatan. What will you get? Hati-hati ya guys, bila kira. Saya rasa objektif untuk bab ni takkan susah. Major problem subjektif saja sebab kena lukis semua tu. Drawing usually is the harder one always. But objektif you must be accurate lah when you count. So guys, dapat apa untuk yang ni? What's your answer? Anyone? What you count? Kalau tak nampak boleh, ya, yeah, the answer should be D. K82 total. Okay guys, nilai ni 15. Kalau kat tengah-tengah maksudnya 15, 15 lah in the middle. 20, uh, 12, 24, 4, 7. Lepas tu tambah semua. That is your total car. Okay guys. Kamu akan dapat 82. Final answer. Clear? Huh? Semua faham? Okay. So just now. You guys say Ojai very hard right? Untuk determine your nilai. So now come. Kita latih yang ni. They ask you find the 50th percentile. So how guys? Can you tell me frequency kamu dulu apa? Kat Y axis, kena cari apa? What is your frequency? 80. Kamu boleh lihat kat sini. Highest point. Uh. So 50% kali 80, you should get 40 lah. Maksudnya, garis macam ni. So this one, I must zoom in a bit lah guys. Baru boleh lihat. So kalau kamu lihat lah, Y sama dengan 40 tu, dia sentuh exactly over here. Okay, tepat-tepat kat sini. So kamu plot terus bawah. I think you should get uh 15.5 yeah okay no other answer lah guys hey, sorry no other answer for this one okay you should get 15.5 if you plot correctly clear huh, guys for just now those who are confused on the percentile this how you do lah this method is called interpolation in english okay dari paksi y kamu sambung ke graph and then you find out your x value interpolation Okay, guys. So, let me see. Anything new? Mm, I think the rest quite basic lah, guys. Mm, let's start now. Nah. Can I explain pandangan lah? Uh, Adi, explain lah. Where were you? Yo, no, no. I just coming on and I explain. Oh, that one I will send the group. You all see yourself lah. How to explain everything, guys? Macam mana saya nak terangkan semua ni? Kalau macam ni, kita stay sampai 12pm lah. <laughs> Happy New Year dah datang. Sorry, Happy New Year di kam. Kalau saya bincang semua. Happy New Year pun dah habis. <laughs> kamu kena go to. This is your responsibility, guys. Bila saya send PDF, kamu kena lihat soalan. Saya pun dah buat working bagi kamu. Ah, Very funny. <laughs> Okay, last question lah guys. We try bro, this. Bro, bro, relax. Yeah, yeah. He not relax. So guys, 
Can anyone tell me answer for this? Final question. Should be no problem lah, but just to see any callous or not. You should know all the steps lah guys, how to count standard deviation CC and PRY ni. So just give the final answer. First step, of course, you have to find uh, midpoint lah. Kamu kena cari titik tengah. Then guna formula mean, cari your mean. Then guna formula CCN PRY to find your CCN PRY. Uh, why you miss him? <laughs> Come on, guys. Kena cuba diri untuk cepat. You must train yourself to be fast when answering paper one. Kena cepat-cepat tekan. Actually, no one to catch out here. He can't mesti catch out. Maybe tomorrow he'll come. When detected got COVID? Today? Ah? Yesterday. Then how XPM? Gonna? No lah, he'll recover lah, of course. Uh, yes, guys, you should get C. Wow, fast and accurate. Not bad. Jawapan C. 5.510. Jawapan ahe. Okay, I think should be no problem lah. Find your midpoint, cari mean, and then yeah, fire 5.510, betul. Okay, guys. So, the rest of the question, as usual, kamu kena go to lah sendiri and see. Because, dia ulang saja. Nilai only different. Everything ulang. So, how you guys feel lah? Today's class, faham tak? Lebih banyak tentang bab ni. I think saya, saya cover banyak dah. I don't think got any more di. Da bincang all your question. Yeah, we listen lah. So guys, again, my YouTube channel, again, boleh share kat kawan-kawan kalau ada lah. If your friend, SPM, they are worried, all the chapter dah ada kat situ. Kamu boleh lihat dah. Form 5 kita dah bincang semua bab, kecuali bab 5. Okay, only chapter 5, transformation. Okay, so other than that, semua habis dah. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Uh, so half, half a week I join also can understand. Oh, cool. Your halfway join can understand. Not bad. <laughs> so guys, uh, make sure young paper I send. Yeah, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I must tell that also. Correct. Okay. <laughs> yeah, YouTube video must tell like that. <laughs> uh, guys, don't forget the paper. Uh, remember. Remember saya hantar kertas kamu kena buat tau yang set for in the group. Uh, of course, A plus group dia bi dah biasa dah. Setiap hari Sabtu Ahad, Disember, they know already. Dia kena buat tugas. Especially EZT. Selalu bagi jawapan. Tak ada orang lain. EZT je yang buat. K1 semua. <laughs> Harap set for ni saya buka kepada public. Ada sosok try lah. Bagi semua orang cuba buat kertas. Okay, mathematics, I rasa, uh, tak perlu, sorry, no need to sorry. Itu kalau free lah. Kalau kamu tak free, memang tak boleh buat lah. Saya tak boleh force. Okay. But at the end of the day, all I hope is uh, SPM kamu okay lah at the end of the day. Apa-apa pun saya ajar harap SPM tu kamu semua buat terbaik lah. Buat sehabis baik. Okay. For yourself guys, bukan untuk saya. Saya tak ada apa-apa guys. Saya dah habis SPM dah. I done with everything already. Semuanya untuk kamu saja. Tak ada apa-apa lagi. Is you and the paper. Tak ada apa-apa lagi. Saya sebagai pembantu saja. Just a helper only. Saya tak duduki exam kamu guys. Kamu je yang tulis. Saya bagi ilmu kepada kamu saja. Tak ada apa-apa. Yang buat tu adalah kamu, bukan saya. First hour 40 objective. 40 minutes. Eh? 40 minutes ah? What suggestion is this? You mean discussion 40 minutes ke? Oh, 40 minutes panjang lah. <laughs> uh, guys, make sure ah, Saturday, Sunday is discussion tau. Maksudnya kamu kena cuba. Bukan saya yang explain semua je. Kamu kena buat peranan kamu juga. Baru efektif. Okay, not only me telling, kamu pun kena cuba soalan. 
baru kamu tahu eh silap ni kat mana and uh, stop there cut cut why am i